What's going on turd nerds? Matt with Operator Mindset here and in today's video we're going to be going over 10 flashcards, 10 questions you need to familiarize yourself with if you're going to sit for your class 3 wastewater exam. Now I can't guarantee you all 10 of these are going to be on there but what I can guarantee is the more knowledge you have going into the exam and the more confident you are walking through that door the better your odds, odds are of passing your exam on the first go around. So these are 10 flashcards I think you should be familiar with, you should add to your arsenal of study material and hopefully it will help you get a point or two, maybe even 10 points if you get all 10, right, on your exam. So let's get into the video, go over these cards. Alright, now I know some of you are probably thinking Flashcards? Actual flashcards? Yeah, they're actual flashcards that I made by hand, okay? A lot of people out there use Quizlets. Quizlets, there's nothing wrong with it. I've used Quizlets. Not saying I won't ever use them again, okay? Not saying don't use Quizlets. But for me, making my own flashcards has done several things. Number one, gets me more familiar with the information. I actually have to read it, write it out. The more I write it, the more I read it, the more you retain it, right? It's kind of one of those things. Now you could argue, if I make my own Quizlets, I'm kind of doing the same thing. You are, but most people just read other people's Quizlets. And not to mention, you're not always 100% sure that the question or the answer is correct. If you're learning about wastewater and you don't know everything about wastewater, because not everybody does know everything about wastewater, how do you know if it's a correct answer, right? What if it's wrong? What if you studied the wrong answer for weeks? It's possible. Not saying I can't make mistakes too. We're all human. These are 10 flashcards that I think you should be familiar with for your class 3 wastewater exam. Number one, where do you place a chlorine leak on a leaking chlorine container? The answer to that is up top. This is going to require you to understand a little bit about Cl2 or chlorine, right? Chlorine is heavier than air, which means it's going to sink. So on a one ton cylinder, if the leak's down here, I can roll the cylinder up and now the leak's on top. You wouldn't just do like that. You'd use overhead hoist, all that good stuff. But the thing you need to know about that question is roll it to the top because the chlorine's going to settle out. It's not going to be leaking. There you go. Question one. Number two. What's the most commonly used disinfectant? Well, I might have just gave it away there. It's chlorine, Cl2. You should definitely know that for your exam. Chlorine leaks may be detected using what? I thought these are chlorine questions. This is gonna be crazy. But the answer to that question is ammonia solution. You use an ammonia solution to detect chlorine leaks, especially around any of your tubing, your fittings, Right when you put on a new cylinder, you want to squirt that stuff around, and if you see that white smoke, you know you got a leak or something's loose, you need to tighten it and address it immediately. Number four, how long must solids records be kept on file? That's a very good question to know for your exam, and the answer is five years. What is fecal coliform hold time? Well, immediately, there's several things you need to know about fecal coliform, and what they're asking for is the hold time. So it's not the incubation time, it's the hold time. How long do you have from the time you take the sample to the time you need to run the sample? The answer there is eight hours. Got it. <clears throat> Question number, I done lost track. On number six, in case you lost track. What's the typical, what is the typical sludge cake percent? Now, right there they're referring to what's the percent of the cake that you get whenever you're running a belt press. I'm gonna say average is 16 to 20. 16 to 20 percent that is. If you're getting 20 percent off your belt press, you're rocking and rolling. Continue on, party on Wayne, right? But 16 percent, you might get less. When they're asking you that question, they're asking what's the range that's best suited for the belt press and the answer you want to know is 16 to 20% on the cake. A mechanical bar screen, rake, inoperative, but the motor runs, what do you check? 
I'm going to be honest. I've seen several bar screen questions on exams before. Most of the time, the answer is the shear pin. And I promise you, any wastewater class you go in, they're going to be hollering, shear pin, shear pin, shear pin. So, of course, for that one, you want to check your shear pin. Now, <clears throat> what is the cause of belt blinding on a belt press? The answer is too much polymer or overfeeding the polymer could cause blinding of the belt. Just meaning it causes a layer on the belt. The belt itself, you're squishing the solids together. The water's coming out, but if it's too much polymer, water can't get out of there. So that's what's going to cause the belt blinding. What is the green wire? That's your ground wire. You should probably need to know that. Uh, green is ground when it comes to your wiring involving motors. Anything electrical. Number 10. Here we are. Name two materials found in wastewater used to make fertilizer. That's going to be nitrogen and phosphorus. And that's correct too. That's just 10 questions I think you should be familiar with if you're about to sit for your class 3 wastewater exam. I would definitely add all 10 of those into your arsenal of study material. If you've already studied them and you know them, great, you're prepared. If not, now you know. Like and subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Stay hungry. Stay motivated. Keep trying to hone your craft. Keep trying to be a better operator. Turn nerd out.